I received an excellent question slash concern from uh, one of the users of our all-in-one model late last month. And I initially set out to address this question in writing, but ultimately concluded that a video would be a better way to explain my rationale here. So first to this concern, Rob had noticed that when he turned on the construction module in the all-in-one, that there was no longer a cash flow in time zero or in month one or year one, depending on whether you're looking at the analysis on a monthly or annual basis. Let me show, show you what I mean. So here we have the all-in-one. When the development length is set to zero, the construction module is turned off and the acquisition or value add module is turned on. And what that means is there's an acquisition price assumption offered to the user here, together with some closing cost assumption to arrive at a total acquisition cost. And this total acquisition cost then flows through into the DCF as a negative cash flow in time zero. Okay, and you'd expect that for acquisition uh, analysis analysis that often occurs on an annual basis. And that's because especially with core acquisition, you're maybe running a 10 year DCF, 11 periods, all right, a time zero plus a year one through year 10. You're using Excel's uh, IRR function to calculate your annual IRR. And that's all well and good. The, the challenge becomes, in the case of the all-in-one, how do we treat development cash flows on an annual basis. And the reason I ask that is if you look at any typical development model in the industry, they're almost universally uh, done on, an, on a monthly basis. If it's a true DCF, they're running it on a monthly basis. And that's because those development cash flows, they don't all occur in time zero. In fact, most occur beyond time zero, month one through month 15, 18, 24, depending on the complexity of the development. And if you look at most development models, they don't even roll up to an annual basis. And why is that? Well, I'll show you the challenge or, or the question that I had to confront when I was rolling up now my development cash flows to an annual cash flow. And it was necessary in the all-in-one because it addresses not just development deals, but also uh, acquisition and value add deals where we might roll where certainly in uh, all in or in acquisition we're going to roll all those cash flows up to an annual basis and that's the the metric and annual IRR that we're most likely going to look at and so I, I played out using just a basic DCF the two options that I had when I made this decision to begin development cash flows in time one so uh, let's take a traditional development model where our first cash flow is in month zero. Okay, and that is most often our uh, our venture closing, our land closing, pre-development costs all flow up into that time zero. And we have one big negative cash flow in that month zero. And then development begins. And it doesn't begin a year later, it begins most often the next day. And your negative cash flows start flowing into the DCF over some development period. And so in the case of my overly simplistic uh, development model here, that occurs over a 16 a period uh, analysis. Time zero, and then month one through month 15. However, uh, for calculating IRR purposes, there has to be some date when these cash flows are happening. And so most often what you'll see is those dates are the last day of the month. So in the, in the case of our month zero cash flow, the land closing and any other venture costs, that's occurring in this case, 12-31-2018. The cash flows in month one all assume to occur January 31st, 2019. So one month uh, later. And then the end of each month thereafter through to the end of of the analysis. And unlike a typical acquisition 10-year DCF, in the case of development analysis, uh, the analysis period ends when uh, the partnership concludes there will be a sale or some recap. And that date most often doesn't occur at the end of a year. It occurs uh, when it makes the most sense. And so in this case, that would be month 26 or month two of year three. 
And so then just to continue our DCF, we have operation cash flows, right? So we finish our construction uh, and then we occupy over some period where we have positive operating cash flows. And then we have some residual cash flow, either the sale or a recap at the end of the analysis. And that's a one big cash flow at the end, such that we arrive at the sum of those cash flows, a net unlevered cash flow line. And in our monthly calculation, most common in the industry is use Excel's XIRR function, which basically Excel asks, what's your string of, uh, when did your cash flows occur on what dates? And then what are those string of cash flows? And when we do the calculation, we get a unlevered IRR on a monthly basis using the XIRR function of 16.17%. However, in the case of the all-in-one, the issue with using this uh, methodology for our development cash flows is that because we're rolling up to an annual basis, something that most development models aren't doing, <clears throat> I'm, we want to try to approximate the, the closest uh, uh, annual IRR as possible. Now keep in mind, the annual IRR for a development deal is not a metric that you really should be paying much attention to. So you know that's, a, that's an important thing to keep in mind. However, because the all-in-one rolls up annual cash flows. I tried to approximate the annual IRR with a methodology that seemed to make more sense uh, in terms of the timing of the cash flows than just purely rolling them up as would be the case if we began in month zero. And let me show you why. So when we, when we build out our annual cash flow string, we've got year zero, one, two, and three, right? And then we have some date. Uh, and in the case of uh, a typical uh, annual analysis, we're going to use Excel's IRR function, which assumes one cash flow at the end of each period or year. So in this case, it, the annual analysis would assume that all of the costs in time zero, land costs and venture costs, et cetera, are all occurring December 31st, 2018. However, all of the construction costs, soft costs, uh, et cetera, the development costs in year one, that negative string of three million, though that cash flow doesn't occur until December 31st, 2019, one year later. Where in practice, uh, those occur one begin occurring one day following your land closing. And so that was one one issue I found with rolling them up is. There, there's a big gap between when our land uh, costs are uh, happen and uh, our first development cost. The next issue that I saw is in terms of our residual. Now, this is the case on, on either methodology, but it's important to point out. Because we're using Excel's IRR function and it assumes one cash flow at the end of each year, this residual cash flow, while in, in uh, actuality it's occurring February 28th, on an annual basis, this IRR function's assuming it's occurring at the end of December. And so uh, there's some drag in the return as a result. And so because the all-in-one necessitated that I roll up to an annual basis, um, I concluded that we would get a better approximation of an annual return by pushing our time zero into month one. And so what, I'm re what really is happening in the all-in-one is your time zero is month one. And uh, such that your first year of cash flows include the land and any venture costs, and then all costs, all costs that occur soon thereafter, such that the sum of your year one becomes, in this case, 3.75 million. Year two, uh, becomes the sum of those year two cash flows here in this case, right? Uh, negative 794,000. And then year three, and again, this has the same problem as the first, uh, Excel assumes that this, the, our residual ha is happening at the end of year three, where really in this case it's happening, right, in, in uh, February. But when we calculate the annual IRR, uh, we arrive at 14.87. Uh, an approximation that, in my experience, is a closer approximation to our monthly IRR than 
using the time zero, year zero con concept that uh, you're going to most often see in an acquisition deal, et cetera. Now, that's important to understand because when you are setting now your analysis start date, you'll notice your analysis start date is month one. Okay, and so if it's an acquisition, that's going to put your time zero December. But in the case of a development, that puts your time zero in January. Okay, uh, time zero meaning month one. Uh, if I turn this on, you'll see it in January. And so it's just important that when you are modeling out your development cash flows, uh, perhaps you want to put land in time one, you may not want to start construction until month two. Um, even though, you know, in practice, you're closing on the land and you're and most often there's costs the very next day. Uh, un, unlike with an acquisition where it, in most cases it's all happening in that time zero. So I hope this answered uh, the question, uh, cleared it up for everyone, help you uh, better use and understand the uh, all-in-one. Please reach out if you have any other questions or concerns and thank you.